probably been asking yourself lately, where can I find some hot parasite on parasite action? In nature, my friend, in nature. We tend to think of parasites from only the human perspective because, well, they can wreak some serious havoc on us, case in point, the guinea worm. That's a parasite that hitches a ride inside a water flea, which can make its way into the human digestive system via a water supply. What happens next is nightmarish. The worm beds down into a nice squishy cavity and grows up to three feet long. Finally, it makes its way to the surface of the skin where humans notice a burning sensation and dunk our limbs into water to alleviate the newly emerging blisters. And this is the parasite's grand plan because now it can emerge from those blisters and unleash your larvae to the surface of the water where some other insect might ingest it. And the cycle begins anew. But things can get far weirder with something called hyperparasites. These are kind of like the Dexters of the insect world. Though instead of a serial killer going after serial killers, these are parasites that target Get other parasites. It's not just about justice or vengeance in nature, it's about the struggle to find limited resources and reproduce. And if it takes a hyperparasite to do it, so be it. So first let's talk about the strangled cries of a blade of grass in the form of something called green leaf volatiles or GLVs. When say a tobacco leaf is under attack by a cabbage white caterpillar, the leaf will emit these GLVs which act as a kind of bat signal to predators of the caterpillar. Great, in swoops one of two species of parasitic wasps so the Cotija rubellica and the Cotija glomerata, these wasps use their ovipositors, these are long sword-like stingers, to inject venom into prey, and to add insult to injury, they lay their larvae inside the caterpillar. Neat trick, right? Now the larvae have a warm and comfy place to grow and a ready source of food, and the wasps are free of any parenting responsibilities. But here's the thing, the presence of the larvae in the caterpillar changes the chemicals in its saliva, which sends out yet another alarm signal. This one picked up by the dastardly Lysibia nana, a hyperparasitoid wasp. Now the L. nana wasp hones in and it deposits its own larva on top of that wasp pupa growing in the caterpillar, and the first wasp pupa hatch and are gobbled up by the second wasp in addition to the delicious guts of the caterpillar. So now this caterpillar can actually host up to four tiers of hyperparasites with larvae stacked upon larvae. We see this kind of hyperparasite at play throughout nature in various other examples, including fungi, and you can look at these parasites as victims of their own success because, according to Sandra Anderson, a researcher at the University of Copenhagen studying a hyperparasitoid fungus, once you're very successful, something else will take advantage of it. And then I'm pretty sure she added a <laughs> All right, hot parasite on parasite action. What do you guys think? Do you think that this is a case of justice in nature or is this just another level of ruthlessness? Let us know in the comments below and to keep the videos a coming, make sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.